Hello, I have Alan with me today. Hi, Alan, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Alan McDermott. I'm an author of action thrillers and uh, spy thrillers, and I've also written a couple of serial killer novels. Uh, I live on the south coast of England, a little place called Worthing, with my wife and my twin daughters, who are 15. Um, <laughs> no pets. That's it, really. Awesome. I just sit at home and write all day. Sounds like bliss, except for maybe the house full of women. Yes. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Um, did you always know that you wanted to be a writer? Uh, no. Um, I tried back in 1990. Um, I saw a, something for a writing competition, a short story. So um, I wrote two of them. One was 5,000 words, one was 500. And I sent them off and I got a reply saying thanks, but no thanks. And then I thought, okay, I'm not very good at this. So the story I was writing, I was trying to write a full novel as well. And I just kind of gave up on that. <clears throat> Went abroad, did some work. Um, and it wasn't until about 2010 when a, a co-worker said to me that she was writing a, a kid's book. Um, and I said that I'd written a couple of short stories and I let her see one of them. And she said, that's great, get it published. And I said, well, no one's gonna want a, you know, a short story. No publisher's gonna want one. So she said, self-publish it. And I had no idea that this thing had ex existed. So she told me about it and I had a look and uh, I self-published this first short story. And then I thought, I, I put it at 99p because you know, it was only 5,000 words. <clears throat> and I thought, I'm not going to make a lot of money from a small percentage of 99p. So I thought, I'll try uh, a longer novel. And then couldn't think of any ideas. And then one day I'm watching Road Wars and there was a, a car chase. And the th car thief was up on the pavements and doing 90 round corners and everything, wrong way around roundabouts. Uh, and then he crashed his car and he got caught. And the voiceover said it was something like his 30th offense. And he got a 200 hour community order or something. And I thought, that's not a punishment. And then I had to seed of the idea for my first book, which was Ray Justice. How many books have you got to your name now? Um, 14 have been published, um, working on the edits for number 15 at the moment, and I'm, I've started work on number 16. That's amazing. I, it could have been a lot more, but I procrastinate so, so much. All of us do. All of you, every single one of you procrastinate. <laughs> so, yeah, don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> I mean, I, I know some authors who can sit down and type out 8,000 words. I don't, I don't know how they can do it. If I, if I get 2,500 words, I consider that an excellent day. But, you know, some people, the words just flow out of the fingertips. But for me, I'll type a sentence and then I think about the next one and how am I going to frame it and blah, blah, blah. And it just takes me forever. It's not a bad thing because that means editing is easier than when you come to do that, or is it still just as long? No, no, editing tends to be much, much easier. Yeah. Yeah, so then it's perfect. It works out fine. Yeah, you balance okay. it one with the other. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, um, I'm not one for going through and doing edit after edit after edit and then giving it to an editor. Um, I'll read through it on my Kindle, because I, I find I can pick up errors easier on the Kindle. Um, and then once I've corrected those, then I'll send it off to the editor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I, I don't do multiple edits on my own. I mean, it doesn't sound like you need to anyway. Oh. Um, I do get a lot of feedback from my editor, believe me. Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's what they get paid for, though, so it's fine. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> um, so since you started writing, what have you found easier than you were expecting to, and what have you found more difficult? Um, to start with the more difficult, um, that is the marketing. Um, because it doesn't matter what story you have, you, you could write the greatest book on, on earth. And if no one knows about it, you're not gonna sell. So that's the, the part that I really, really need to work on is um, finding a way to reach new readers. Yeah. The easiest part um, or the part that was easier, um, no, I, I didn't go into this with any preconceptions. I just thought I'll, I'll write a book and I just started typing. So <laughs> there was no, this is going to be hard or this is going to be easy or anything. No, it was just, um, I just, I just got on with it. Um, what's the most interesting thing you found while doing research for your books or what's the biggest research rabbit hole you've fallen down? Um, there's been a couple of rabbit holes. Um, one was for uh, I think it was for Grey Redemption, my third book, um, where somebody wanted to create a virus that would affect just Caucasian people. And I'd got so far into writing it, and then I was doing the research. And then I realized that it can't be done. There's, there's, no, there's, there's no proof that you can distinguish, a virus can distinguish between Caucasian and non-Caucasian. Um, so what I did was when I got to that part, I had the professor explaining what he was doing. And then um, the person that wanted the virus cut him off and said, oh, just, is it ready or not? <laughs> so. <laughs> That's like a, a cheat's way out. Um, uh, the one I'm doing at the moment, um, there was quite a bit of work on this one as well, but I don't want to reveal what it is because the book isn't out yet. So um, I think people will have to read it to find out what this one is. Um, if you were to be... <laughs> um, picked up and transported as a character into one of your own books, which book would you choose? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> That's a tough one because most of my secondary characters <laughs> get killed or beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love asking um, crime writers. <laughs> I think maybe Trojan. I'd like to be one of the characters in Trojan. Uh, one of the MI5 characters, obviously, not one of the bad guys. Because I'd, I'd really, really like to, to actually go around MI5 and see how things really work. I know it will never happen, but it, you know, that's just a little dream of mine. And if you were able to take out one of your characters for a meal, who would you choose and what would you ask them? Ooh. I think I'd take Sonny, Sonny Baines, Simon Sonny Baines. He's uh, a character that's in um, all six of the Grey Book, all, all seven of the Grey Books. Uh, he's also in Trojan and he's in all four of the Eva Driscoll books and the one that I'm writing now. So he's been a character that's been through three complete, well, three series, two series and a standalone that bridges the series. So um, I like him, he's a, he's a little cheeky chap. Um, good sense of humor, I think. So yeah, I'd like to go out and have a pint with him one day. Um, you must have killed lots of your characters in various ways, but if you yeah. were to be a fictional character in a book, how would you kill someone? Ooh. Um, 
I think there's a drug called succinicoline or something like that. It's, uh, that's the American name for it. And it's something you use when you intubate a patient so that it relaxes the muscles in the front. Um, but if you give too much of that, it's deadly. And it's not something that's generally tested for in a, an autopsy. So if I was going to kill someone and want to get away with it, that would be what I would use. Um, if I was going to kill someone and it didn't matter if I got away with it or not, um, I don't know. Probably with a gun. I don't think I'm too squeamish to get up close and do it personally. <laughs> I'd say a, sni a sniper's rifle from a long, long way away. Um, and if you were to be fictionally murdered, who would you want to solve your case? Who would I want to solve my case? You mean one of my characters or any character in general? Any, any in the whole of fiction, TV or books or anything. Hmm. I'd say Andrew Harvey, one of my characters, because to be honest, I'm, I'm not really into the, um, I don't read a lot of the, the, the police genre. So, um, I mean, I, I have read them in the past, but at the moment, um, I haven't picked one up for quite a while. So to actually think of a character would be difficult for me at the moment, sorry. Yeah, I have rather put you on the spot, so that's fine. <laughs> I'll let you off. <laughs> um, do you hide any secret jokes, messages, or Easter eggs in your books? No, no. no. Um, there's a few jokes in there. You know, I like the, especially Sonny and Len when they have a back and forth. But uh, no, no Easter eggs. It's not something I'd ever, I'd ever thought of, really. Um, do you have any fears or phobias, and would you write about them? Um, I do have fears and phobias, yes. Um, I don't think I've ever written about them, though. Mine is heights. That's why I'm so short. <laughs> if I was any taller, I'd just keep falling over. <laughs> but no, if... I, I can't even stand on a chair without getting dizzy. Uh, it's, it's not that, oh, I don't really want to do this. It's like my body just says, we're not doing this. And my legs turn to jelly and I can't move. So if I was take, you know, suddenly if I was just lifted up and put on top of a 20 foot pole, I would, I think I would just fall, probably for just fall off. <laughs> Yeah, and I, oh, yeah. I've, I've had dreams about that. I, I don't know why, but I, I go to sleep and then I, um, I envisage a landscape and then suddenly the floor falls away and I'm just looking down thousands of feet. And I don't know why I do it. I do it just most nights before I go to sleep. I must have been bad in a previous life. Yeah, that seems exceptionally cruel of your brain to <laughs> really nasty. <laughs> I mean, it could ask me awkward questions or questions that there's no answer to, but it, no, it does this. Yeah, yeah, that's mean. Yeah, you must have done something horrible. Yes. <laughs> God knows what they do. Hmm? Um, when you are editing, what's your most overused word or phrase? Nodded. <laughs> Nodded and shrugged. Yeah, every every time I at the end of each book, I, at the top I put um, proofreading, and I put things like instead of Cooper, look for Copper, uh, look for this word with lowercase when it should be uppercase, like March, um, and I also have nodded and shrugged to see how many times I've done it. You know, sometimes thirty times. And like no, no, if, if he nods that much, his head's going to come off. <laughs> So, you know, you got, you got to come up with some pretty strange ways of uh, making someone move their head to acknowledge something. Yeah. 
you'd be great in a quiz, I suppose. How many different ways can you say nodded and shrugged? <laughs> you could probably list off 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try that um, one on my mind. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, if you're able to spend a day with any author, dead or alive, who would you like to spend a day with? Uh, alive. <gasps> dead ones would probably stink by now, you know. Um, you could reanimate them for 24 hours. Ah, right. In that case, Tom Clancy. Yeah, he's my favourite author of all time. Mm -hmm. Um, loved his books. I'm just about to start reading Hampton Red October again. I've read, well, I've read all of his books. Um, Rainbow Six is my favourite of all time. I've read that it's probably about six times now. I've got the huge, thick, um, hardcover copy of that. Um, so yeah, Tom Clancy would be the one. What about live then, if you were to choose and a live one? A live one? Um, I don't know. It's unfortunate being an author. I, I get to meet other authors. Um, big, famous authors. I don't know, George R. R. Martin. I've met him, but I only got a, a quick selfie and that was it when I was in New York. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll sit down with him and find out what he really wanted to do at the end of Series 8. Wow, that's awesome, because he is, well, I mean, Game of Thrones is just something else. So just, just a teensy bit jealous. <laughs> um, are you going to any signing events or anything this year? Um, I'm going to Crime Fest on May the 12th in Bristol. Uh, I'm not decided yet about Harrogate. Um, I may go there, but the uh, thing is my kids break up from school the day before. So if I suddenly take off, I mean, they'll probably all want to come with me. And if I do that, then I can't sit around and drink with my author friends. So. Um, I may go, I may not go, I don't know yet. You need to we'll start to planning and negotiations now. You need to put, yes. give, them, yeah. give them something that means that you can get away with a weekend and then start slipping it in the conversation now. And they won't even notice. Yeah. Good luck with whatever that is. I have no ideas, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll get working on it. Yeah. Because obviously Harrogate's awesome, so no one could miss Harrogate. Is, yeah, yeah, I've been there a few times and it's uh, it's fun. Yeah, I only went for the first time last year and I loved it, so I'm going back this year. Um, what do you like to do when you're not writing? Um, not much. <laughs> I don't do very much at all. Um, my daily routine is I wake up at five thirty in the morning. Um, have us a couple of cups of coffee, um, get the girls up, make sure they have breakfast. Then I go on the exercise bike for 45 minutes, um, have another cup of coffee, probably play a couple of games, watch the news, stuff like that. And then um, I just do my writing. I don't sit at my desk all the time. I'm, I'm up every 40 minutes or so. Um, doing the dishes, little things around the house, just to clear my head because I sit staring at the screen all the time, then I just, the words don't come. So if I feel I'm stuck, I just get up, take a walk, do the dishes, take the rubbish out, things like that. Just get away from the computer, just let it go through my head. Um, I would have said five years ago, I would have said going to the pub, sitting outside in the garden, reading my Kindle, having a fag. Um, but I stopped smoking four and a half years ago. Um, I vape, but I've given up the cigs, and I'm not really a, a drinker anymore. I think last five years ago, I would have drunk five, six, seven days a week, but now it's once every five or six weeks now. So it's not something that I really think about anymore. 
now and again, I'll, um, a great film will come out on Netflix or something. And I'll th yeah, okay. And I'll have that with a beer on Friday. Did you watch um, Reacher? I watched Reacher, yeah. I, I, I don't tend to watch TV very much. The only time I watch is when I'm on my exercise bike. So I do about 45 minutes. So that's like virtually one episode. So yeah, if I watch a box set, it'll take me eight days. For Reach, it took me eight days. Yeah, I um, accidentally watched that all in one evening. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> 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 I, usually I'm too busy usually I've got about 10 books to read and interviews to do and blog tour posts to do and stuff so how on earth I had a whole evening to watch all of Reacher I have no idea it does make me wonder if I was forgetting to do something but yeah. no one shouted at me so yeah. <laughs> usually someone shouts at me oh, hey. did you uh, did you forget that you were supposed to do this <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually but it's fine. I love it, so it's all good. Um, who is your first celebrity crush? Celebrity crush? Debbie Harry. Popular yeah. choice. <laughs> Very popular choice. Yes, that name's come up quite a few times. It's people of a certain age, I think. Yep. And the guys usually I can predict are women of a certain age as well. So you all just, just predict for it's fine. <laughs> yep, sorry. No, she's hot. So even now she's still awesome. So yeah. it's cool. Um, do you have any funny nicknames? Uh, me? No. Um, Ooh, about 30 years ago, I had a, a mate who called me Mac. But no, since then, it's just been Alan. Pretty boring, <laughs> really. Sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. I only get called Don. Name for me, but I won't share them on here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, that's no fun. Um, where's the strangest or funniest place you've ever woken up? Oh. I don't think I have. You mean not expecting to wake up there? Yeah. No. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten myself in a situation like that. Sorry. No, I mean, that's I mean, you know, again. no, that's good. <laughs> I uh, I love the people that are filtering the story, thinking I can't tell that one, can't tell that one. <laughs> Obviously, you can control alcohol consumption, which is usually the reason. Yeah. Although some people's weren't alcohol induced and they were still funny. So, yeah, no, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, what's your most treasured possession? Again, um, I don't think I've got any treasured possessions. Uh, my laptop. I'd say it was my laptop. Um, because I'm, I'm not a materialistic guy. Um, I don't get my, my money and go, right, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, I want a car, I want this, I want that, I want the new TV and everything. No, I'm, I'm, I just, I'm just happy to pay my bills. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd say my laptop, which is six years old now. Yeah. And in need of a new camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, since you first started writing, what's been your favourite moment, your stand-up moment? Um, being nominated for an award. Um, I was nominated for an ITW award, International Thriller Writers. And my publisher sent me to New York for the uh, ceremony. So that was... <laughs> That was a cool, that was a cool moment, yeah. That's when I met George R.R. R. Martin. Yeah, that's awesome. And what's your biggest dream? Is it just to keep selling books or would you like to actually win an award or want a bestseller? 
I'm, I'm not too bothered about winning the award. I, I just want to pay my bills. That's that's all I want to do. Yeah. Um, I'd like to have a number one. That would be nice. Number one bestseller. Um, but really, I I just um, I'm I'm just happy to keep plodding them as I am, just writing and paying my bills. Do you get a lot of feedback from your readers? Yes, yes. Um, at the end of at the end of each book, um, I put my email address and tell people they can just um, send an email and I'll put them on my mailing list. And sometimes I just get a blank email with the um, with Driscoll for one of the Driscoll books or Tom Gray for the Gray books. Um, but sometimes I get some um, some really, really long emails. And I, I end up having a, a back and forth with these people. And, and it's not just, you know, one or two emails. It goes on for some of them have been for five or six years now. So just every now and again, he'll just email me, I'll email back, and you know, it's, it's great. Yeah, that's lovely. Have you ever had any weird or strange emails or feedback about your books? No. No, I think I've, I've been lucky, Jen. Oh, I had one, and he said, I really loved your book. But when are you going to write more about um, Chase and someone else? And I thought, who's this Chase and someone else? So I did a search for them. And that was Andy McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, uh, I said, uh, I can't remember what I said. Something like, uh, yeah, there'll be one out in the future. <laughs> Oh, it was close, bless him. <laughs> um, so you said you're working on your latest book, and then do you know what's coming next? After this one that I'm working on? Yeah. No. Um, this one, I think, mm -hmm. is going to be the end of the Eva Driscoll series. Um, after that, I have the option of um, another Ryan Anderson, who was in Motive, or another Alex Mann and Roland Cooper who were in the book that I'm editing. Um, and I've got the seeds of a couple of ideas, but I don't know how to actually work them. So um, I don't know which of the characters I'm going to um, use for these ideas. I'm sure something will come to me before I actually get to write it. Yeah. Well, let's hope so anyway. <laughs> Could be awkward otherwise. <laughs> yes. Well, you may be relieved to know that I can't think of any more questions for you unless you think there's anything I haven't asked you that you want to tell us. Um, no, I can't think of anything. Um, no. No, sorry about that. No, just, not uh, at all. Fabulous. That means I'm sure you've got some authors who can just talk and talk and talk, <laughs> and they've got so much to say. But <laughs> basically, I'm, I'm, I just write. The rest of my life is a pretty mundane, to be honest. Nothing wrong with that at all. Absolutely yeah. nothing wrong with that. And I have asked you some horrible questions, so it's good. No, I think they've been good. They've been good questions. Good. I'm pleased to hear it. Um, so, would you like to just tell everyone where they can find out more about you and where they can get your books from? Um, all my books are available on Amazon. Um, my website is alanmcdermottbooks.co.uk um, and I've got a couple of books uh, free at the moment. The first one is Run and Hide and also Trojan. So Trojan is the bridge between the grey books and the Eva Driscoll books, but it can be read as a standalone. And then Run and Hide is the next book, and it's the first in the Eva Driscoll series. So those two are currently free from all retailers. Yes, well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay.